Hey guys, it's Danielle, Beauty Plastica, and I'm here in my new craft room. It's a sunroom where I mostly do a lot of my crafts anyway, so I decided to make my doll room a little bit more pretty and to have this room be where I make all the messes. Um, so behind me I've got all my craft supplies, paints and such, got some wood down there and some other like recyclables and stuff that I keep for future projects. Um, over, let's just turn around. Okay, over here we've got a second table over there so I can just spread out the mess. Over here we have my, my treadmill, sorry, which finally is getting some use as a drying station. Do, 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 do. We've got some Barbies down there that we're making gruesome for Halloween. And then the plants and gardening stuff there. Here I just have an extra table that's going to have more supplies and whatnot. And then over here, over there we have another table where I can add more junk. Maybe like projects will be there. Um, and then here I've got the plastic chest of drawers that I hate. It's full of like scrapbooking type things. So let's see what I've been up to. Uh, as you saw on Instagram, I've been working on that. Sorry, that cat from hell. I'm thinking of calling her um, Maggie um, after Maggie the cat, but also after um, Maggie the frog, who's actually really Maggie, like some sort of um, blood magic woman. Anyway, I painted it all. Okay, I used mostly cotton balls and um, white glue, undiluted, to give it a sort of muscly texture. And um, I did washes of brown, red, and like a brick red kind of thing. I think I started with brick red. Um, but when I sealed it with gloss Mod Podge to make it nice and gooey, I had all these white spots. I think I painted over all of them, but it was all foamy. Like, okay, can you see that there? Right in there? Anything? Get anything? Get anything? Do do do. Anyway, it's all like. Looks like spit. It's gross. Like someone spit. I like one of my the things that grosses me out. Not a lot grosses me out, but the sound of like hawking a loogie and spitting. So having a thing covered in spit was just a little too much for me. So I painted it all brown again, and we're about to go in with some diluted red. Do a wash of that. So hopefully we'll get Maggie done. I have her tail. I kind of forgot her tail, um, but it just needs to be painted. But I'm not sure I'm going to add it. I kind of like the idea that it was like burned off, but I don't know. I'll add it back maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. Okay. What else am I working on? First thing this morning when I woke up, I was thinking about this, um, spear thing, spear or, um, to, you know, like a walking stick. staff, staff, the staff for, um, my little demon girl who still doesn't have a name. I was thinking about one name, but I'm not, I'm not ready to commit yet. But once I get that name, we'll do a little video with her so that we can all get to know her. Um, so I woke up thinking about all the things I want to dangle off of it. So in just like an old doll box here, I'm just gathering up some things that might be cool. Like this little jeweled skull. I'm not supposed to do this, right? Don't look at my face. I don't know if it worked, but good enough and then I've got some teeth which is what I use to make her um, her horns and just like a random tooth and some snakes but then I also had the idea of rating my daughter's monster high stuff hold on a second okay so the girls have kindly donated as in mommy stole them because they're not interested in anything but animals um, some monster high things so I thought I grabbed some hands. This is from that moth girl, like the Freaky Fusion. Um, she was so cute. Oh, she was so cute. But anyway, she's got skeleton arms and like Skeleta. Um, so I thought I could paint those up and add them around the staff somewhere. I've got loads of Monster High hands, so they could just be hands sort of wrapped around here or just like a little little skirt, a little skirt of hands. I, I'm not sure yet. So, of course, also the Monster High stuff is a gold mine 
for good, um, just good like like shapes and sculpting. So even though it's plastic, I just I love this little like gauntlet. So maybe we can do something like that for her. I've also been thinking about shoes. I've been working on a pair of shoes and they're so hideous right now that I cannot show you, but I will. And what I'm hoping is to have like hands on it. All of these, I have many, many hands, many hands. Um, so that, or there was one really cheap one we got at the dollar store. It's almost like a costume for Monster High and they've got little flame things. This is sort of, I guess it goes on her calf, like a leg warmer. Oh, like one because this is the fire. <laughs> good times, good times. So I could make them look a little bit more realistic. Um, and what else? There's that, uh, the big one. And I love that she had this skeleton. What is this thing supposed to be? Oh, yes, it's like a skeleton horse, carousel skeleton horse. Uh, I think these are too big for my girl, but if I could sort of have a kind of effect like that, that would be pretty neat. Um, so that's it. I've Oh, and for saddles, I've rated their saddle collection, these girls, because they always have horses and whatnot. That's pretty basic. Um, and they just got a dragon. Ooh, I don't think I can fit this on very easily, but just a big dragon you want. What if I did it that way? That'd be pretty weird. Um, yeah, so that's... Oh, I showed that saddle. I don't know what happened to the other saddles I just unearthed today. Anyway... So, Maggie will be worked on. I'm not sure if that's her final name, but that's what I'm going for now. Anyway, let's go into the new and improved doll room. I always should do before pictures because, like, you don't know how terrible it was first. Oh, and they've got some little tiny, like, dragons of Burke dragons, so I might paint this one up and have it on the staff or have it in her little hellscape that I'm going to make her. Um, I'm get, taking my time with that. I'm not rushing into another diorama project. Um, I really just need to get some things done for the dolls. But I am thinking about my like cracked earth lava thing. And uh, it's freezing in here. I moved everything in just in time for it to be unbearably freezing. Um, a little craft juice. A little craft gasoline. Uh, Alright, so let's move somewhere else. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Okay, so I went to the dollar store to find a bunch of cheap skeletons to corpse up, but they sold out of everything really fast. So we ended up going to Kroger, and I found this guy. He was in a like a prison, like a striped, black and white stripe thing. Um, so he was there, and there was like a bride and groom that was really cute. Um, but this is a good, sturdy skeleton, and it's nice and poseable-ish as you can see. So I thought I would make him um, just sort of some comic relief in the hellscape. I want to give him a really ordinary name like Harold or something like that. And um, I don't know, he might just, just be like laying around in a uh, little demon girl's place. I can't wait to find her name. She's been really inspiring. It's been really fun to work with her. So let's go into the other room and uh, see what's going on in there. Okay, so we are in the new doll closet. I decided the closet is only going to have things that belong to the dolls for their bodies, their hair, eyes, and things like that are in here. I also have some lights in there, but they needed to go somewhere because I wanted my doll room to just be a little bit more peaceful, to just be dioramas. Um... I know the lighting is not great. I just wanted to show you around. So then I just have the computer and then the the river finally has, can you even see it? The river finally has somewhere to live. Oh, you don't need to, you don't need to go into that bathroom. Uh, the floor is covered with fabric right now because I'm trying to get that organized. But, um, yeah, this is where we are. Okay, let me find somewhere with good light. Okay, this light's got to be good enough. So I just wanted to show you my little demon girl. Um, now her face up is going to be redone. Oh, she's so cute. Her face up's going to be redone because I just wanted to slap something on there. And I definitely wanted eyebrows that are crazy. But I might use a different type of material so I can get a good 
crazy curl in there. Um, she's gonna need some piercings, which I'm not. I'm not. I'm not great at. I'm not great at. Um, but I'm working on that. Uh, we're working on shoes. If you won't judge me, I'll show them to you. Hold on. Okay. After seeing, sorry. Hello. I won't be like up in your face. Um, once I saw uh, Lady T B J D's uh, boots, I became more and more ashamed of these shoes. But this is just a base. They're just like. Oh, sorry, baby. They're just mules, you know, slides. Um, and then around there will be like studded situation. And maybe I'll work in those little flames somehow. I was thinking about having some kind of sculptural element to her shoes, but I don't know how to sculpt, so. But it'd be cool if we had like hands or other like body parts, bloody body parts. <gasps> Bloody buddy parts are my thing now. Okay, so she's got little horns that are some sort of animal claw. Oops. I shortened um, the necklace that originally belonged to Shika when she came in in her previous life. I shortened it because it was just so perfect for her. Even though my clasp isn't good, and I'm going to redo that. Uh, what else? So I'm working on... Oh, I, have to, I should show you the... Uh, the mobile hospital. I just covered the seat in black leather and I'm going to, I might go in with like some little, um, buttons and go into the, you know, the little low points in there. And it would be, cause it would be cool to have like one kind of falling off and whatnot, but we'll see about that. It's the only buttons I have. Maybe we could use some sort of bead. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's go look at the mobile hospital flip the camera around just to make things a little bit easier. So here's what we have so far. Satiri and Leaf Spar was kind enough to send me these beautiful blood samples. And I've got the green ones in here somewhere. They might be in the fridge. Oh, they are. Now, I forgot what Satirian said about this, the green blood. It's like it's been tested for something and that's why it's green or something's been added to it to make it green. I'm not sure. So anyway, so I have not fully decorated in here, but I've just added a few things, like our little shelf full of doodads that I, I need to make little pills to go in them, and some will have herbs. Um, and then our little shelf there, you've got to have, if you're a serious doctor, you've got to have a blowtorch. And that was from Rotor Walk and Vogel. Um, oops. Um, Sidonie. Or maybe she pronounces it Sydney. I don't know. I just want to call her Sid. I would love to have this thing in here, but it's not really functional. So it's just kind of wasting my space because I do need to build some sort of a gurney or something. We'll see about that. Um, I still have to... This is a strange texture, but the, the paint comes right off. So I just kind of have to sand it a little bit. And I have to remake these things that came right off when I peeled off the tape. Um, and then I could maybe shine up the floor or something. Um, and here's my girl, been re-dyed, uh, her head was re-dyed, her face was re-dyed, because it came off when I did the face-up. Oh, I also have to fix these mirrors, get the paint off that. Um, and then hopefully get some, uh, bloody body parts in here, because that's kind of a thing these days. I got these beautiful beakers from Wish. I was very happy about that. Uh, other thing I got from Wish is this, uh... It's like a little folding blade thing. And it's actually got quite an edge on it, so be careful. I think it's, if you search for like folding tactical knife or something. Tactical. Like what kind of tactics do you have? Like if you're using a tiny knife. I've got tactics. Watch out. Um, and then I want, you know, some, ooh, shoot. I think I kind of just cut myself with that. Uh, I want some like, you know, charts. The, like the human body and stuff up there. And that's about it for Dr. Arnica Incarnata and her mobile hospital. Oh, I've got some signage and whatnot. Um, nothing too complicated. And then eventually those uh, touch-ups I keep talking about. Like I see right here. I can see blue. So I just got to touch up a little white. Anyway, yeah. Um, I guess that's it for now. I actually have more to say, so we're not going to go away yet. Thanks, Gina. I'm now mixing my paints properly, not with a brush or a popsicle stick. 
or with a palette knife, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, I had stuff to say. I'm just going to work on Maggie while we talk. I'm trying to decide if I should dry brush her or super wet brush her. So let's figure it out. Okay. Oh, one thing I wanted to tell you. I really wanted to do like an oil slick in the uh, Luna Noir diorama, and I didn't really know how I was going to go about it. And I was looking for this iridescent tissue paper, and of course I'm not going to buy it. So one year after I decided to do that project, um, my husband went to a DJ to party, and um, he, uh, our friend Lee had, she, it was her party, um, she had this uh, cellophane stuff in the little gift bags. So I'm going to try to paint it black on the underside and kind of see what it looks like. Um, you know, I name my year every year. I think next year might be the year of experimentation. I've been having a lot of fun trying some different techniques, like the 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 corpsing of Maggie the Cat. Um, see, I'm going to keep calling her Maggie, not Maggie, because nobody really knows how to pronounce Maggie. Maggie. I guess that's it. A guy. Uh, okay, this is a little bit wetter than dry brushing, but I'm liking the color, so I'm going to go with it. Basically, I just stuck the brush in paint and dabbed it a little bit on a paper towel, and it's, it's wetter than dry brushing. So anyway, Maggie, 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 we're talking about her, the corpse thing stuff. Yeah, so I've been enjoying working, like experimenting with different techniques to do a project, like for Maggie here, we started off with... Um, Always have a little rag around. We started off with cotton balls and liquid latex, and then we moved on to we tried paper, no toilet toilet paper, and glue. That was watered down glue. Um, and then we tried it watered down glue with the cotton balls, which did not work out. And then we tried straight glue with the cotton balls, that worked out really well. So it was fun to like, try new things and whatnot. Just because I'm doing this for fun, I don't need to take myself, I don't need to take Maggie too seriously, like you would take a BJD seriously. It just makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. Oh, crap. Because Maggie was like 15 bucks. Maybe 10, I don't know. Um, so, um, so I think this would be a great year to just experiment with new techniques and learn new things and do things I haven't done. And I really haven't worked on the dolls enough. Um, I'm spending too much time on dioramas and props because I love it. Um, but it's time to branch out a little bit. So, year of experimentation. Maybe we'll do that. So, I did a thing. I did a thing, you guys. Um, I was looking for a body for Kitten De Palma, right? Because you know her head, the Cynthia, will be coming eventually. Um... So I was looking at bodies because the 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 soul doll body, Vito body, is not very poseable. It seems really difficult. I saw a great couple of videos from Bustamante one one nine and he had a soul doll Vito and did some like surgery to her and really did a good um, a good job like showing all of the posability of the lack thereof. This just feels a little purpley. I guess I'll keep going. I'll go bright red a little bit later. Uh, so Soul Doll's not really posable, and the whole problem with original kitten, um, other than, look, to be honest, the raccoon dolls, I love them. I really love them, but like Eiffel House, they're like dead in the eyes. They look like little mannequin corpses, um, which is okay. Sabine is among my favorite dolls. I like, I love her, even though I can't make eye contact with her. Um, but I didn't want that for Kitten. Kitten's a, you know, smirky and, um, you know, has a bit of a temper and she's, she's moody. You need to be able to see that she can have moods. Well, honestly, you see, you see Sabine's moves, moods. It, it's true, but it's, anyway, it's not what I wanted. I wanted something a little bit more expressive. 
and the body needed to be flexible because she's a private detective. She needs to be like crawling through things and doing weird martial arts or something. I bet the neighbors think I'm crazy because this is all like glass and I'm sure they can see me in here just waving around a dead cat and getting real animated talking to nobody. Um, yeah, so looking for a body for kitten. Um, and I put up a post on DOA, got a lot of good advice and guidance, especially from Gina, who is the queen of the hybriding. Um, and then uh, Stacy from Capricorn Makes posted Argonautica dolls. And I feel like I'd seen them from Nikaya Wolf. Um, funny story, Nikaya Wolf, if I'm pronouncing that right. I made Aniata's first wig. So the first BJD wig that I ever got from like a person, not a company, was made by her. And then I found her a couple of years later on Instagram. Now we're friends on Facebook. It's fantastic. Um, anyway, that's my point. Yeah, so I thought that she had had, I had seen one of them and, you know, it didn't really suit my fancy, but... I went to the site to go look for this body to see if it would work in De Palma, and I'm like, that's cool. But I'm going to wait for her head to get here before I make any moves on a body because the veto head, I'm not sure. Like, is it more SD-ish or is it more MSD-ish? Like, what's the range of, of um, bodies I should be looking for? But then I saw Let, Argonautica Let. That's the dryer. Hopefully it'll keep doing that through the whole video. Okay, I just turned it off because... It, you can set the signal so that it like beeps forever or like it just it's short for some reason someone had set it to beep forever maybe that's because someone named Danielle does not like does not like taking things out of the dryer and folding them I'm not a fan of that I'm not a fan of that otherwise laundry is great if it wasn't for the folding and putting away all right so where were we oh Argo Nautica let I mean I don't know if I can explain the feeling I had. I, I, you know me. I like the chicks, man. I like I like having tough chick dolls. I that's my thing. And all the boys are here to amuse the girls. But uh, you know, you guys, you have your sons, you have your boys, you have your lovers. Um, whatever your doll represents to you. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. Um, but I've never had that bond. And I saw this boy. Oh my God. He was so beautiful. And the poses. The poses were amazing. And I really felt like I kind of needed him in my life. Um, and then I thought for a while that he might be modern. Which would be fun to have a, a modern doll. Because I don't. I guess when you. Luna Noir is more like, like postmodern. I guess. They're in the future. So. It's not. I guess modern is not exactly the right word. Uh, Argonautica. So then I thought he would be like modern and wear like, you know, fancy sweaters and scarves. Um, but is that going to really work for me? Like I'm not, I'm not a fashion-y person. I hate buying doll clothes. I don't know why. I just, I am not interested in it. I would rather give them stuff, which is why my dolls don't have any clothes. They got stuff. So, oh, I should be doing this in front of you. So anyway, um, I, I, I was thinking, and this is still in the works, so we don't know yet, that he may be like the shaman or medicine man, spiritual leader of Aniata's tribe, since he's, he's Aniata's size. Um, and see the... Okay, so quick background on Aniata. I just thought I was one of the kids. Um, quick background on her is that she's from a tribe um, called the Kene, and basically they don't know it. They're that they're that they're deities. They just think they're like a little Neolithic tribe. Well, obviously they don't think they're Neolithic, but um, so yeah, I think this red's looking pretty good. We just get all the parts. Um, so basically she should have taken over and become, become the, the, the tribal leader's wife and taken care of like, you know, the, the, the 
not safety. I guess he would be safety and protection. She'd be more like, you know, the maintenance, like making sure everybody's organized with everything they're supposed to be, like hunting and gathering and basket weaving and stuff, and just be the boss of all that. And she was not feeling it. She was like, nope, I am fabulous and independent, and I'm going to go out here and do my own thing. And then she ran into the Langor Wood, which is the enchanted forest where Dash Kabani lives. She met that whole crew, and that's where she lives now. And her tribe was basically destroyed because she is a river, and so the river moves and messes everything up, like the rocks that were part of that, or, you know, the spirit of, like, that tree over there got knocked out. And so these deities are all sort of in a chaotic place. They'll be reassigned to whatever nature things that need watching over or whatever, but now she doesn't know. She just left and didn't look back. She didn't know that she basically destroyed her tribe, um, even though they're not really destroyed. They just changed form or whatever. So uh, for some reason, it's possible. We don't know if this is what's gonna happen. I'm going in with a bright, bright red now. Um, we don't know yet, but I think I need to go even heavier with this thing. Can you even see it? Because this looks the same as that, no? Whatever. So, right. So the shaman of the tribe would have been very tight with her parents. And because this uh, Argonautica Let looks pretty young, it'd probably be like the shaman's um, apprentice, acolyte or whatever. Um, for some reason, let's say they were not destroyed in the big flood that Aniata caused by leaving the tribe. And see, the, the thing is like, yeah, in the tribe, you don't know you're a deity until, you know, you reach a certain age, you sleep for three days, and you have a super high fever, and at the end, you have an awareness, and you go to the mountain, and you, we don't really know what happens up there, but you, you become fully deitized or something. You understand your purpose, uh, you know where you belong in the universe, I guess. Um, so Aniad has not had that experience yet. I mean, she she knows she's got powers. You can't just walk into Langer Wood, you know, as a human and just be chilling. And she did. And so they know that there's, there's they probably know more than she does about her tribe. They would have been, you know, kind of spying on local life or whatever. So anyway, suppose this young shaman um, was away from camp or away from something or who knows if the deities have to be reassigned, I would think that the medicine man or shaman or whatever would have something to do with it, um, helping to reassign them or whatever, getting their spirits in the right place. So I don't know, but I feel like it's his job to go out there, find Aniata, and get her to maybe go to the mountain and be trained. Or blessed, or whatever happens up there. So, he could be my little shaman guy, and I mean, think of how cute he could be, with freaking robes, and masks, and the freaking staff that you shake, and the stuff rattles, and, and uh, yeah, robes cool poses and photos. Um, but I'm not going to pigeonhole him because these these dolls love to come in and change who they are. All I know is I, I have a problem with things that are bright and happy. Those don't do well for me in the stories. I don't think any of these stories are happy and everyone's in love and there are no problems. Everything's a little heavy and that's the way I like it. So I don't think this guy can just come in and be modern and fabulous and have no story or have a story. I mean, like a modern story. Like, I don't know. It's almost too depressing if it's a modern story because, like, <laughs> it could be happening now <laughs> in American government. <laughs> yeah, so, you know what? She's not looking bad. I still think we need a little bright red on her somewhere. Get some more bright red in here in the guts. Get along the spine. So, thanks for joining me. I should go now because 
you know, I like this new thing, like we're going to do shorter videos and whatnot, like I want to get on board with that and I've already done a good 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop here. Love you guys. Bye.